In the grim aftermath of World War II, the city of Nuremberg, Germany hosted one of the most significant events of the 20th century. The Nuremberg Trials, a series of military tribunals held to prosecute prominent leaders of Nazi Germany, were the stage for an unprecedented moment in history. On October 1, 1946, in Nuremberg, 21 top Nazi leaders heard their sentences after a 10-month trial underscoring that no position of power could shield one from facing justice for wartime atrocities. Nazi leaders, once untouchable, stood before an international military tribunal, accountable for their wartime horrors. A chilling moment of justice for unspeakable World War II atrocities. The first of many post-World II trials sent a chilling message to tyrants worldwide, exposing Nazi horrors and sentencing 12 of 21, including Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel, to hang. A stark warning, justice awaits. Wilhelm Keitel's early life in the German Empire was marked by personal loss and thwarted ambitions. Following his mother's death and his father's refusal to pass on the family estate, Keitel joined the Prussian army as an artillery officer in 1901, setting the stage for his future military career. In 1909, Wilhelm Keitel married Lisa Fontaine, the daughter of a wealthy landowner and owner of Europe's then largest brewery. Their marriage produced six children, tragically one of whom passed away young, blending their lives with both prosperity and sorrow. During World War I, Wilhelm Keitel served on the Western Front, where a shrapnel grenade seriously wounded him in Flanders in 1914. After recovering, his organizational skills led him to serve in the Army General Staff starting in the spring of 1915, marking the early shaping of his military career amidst the chaos of war. The First World War concluded on November 11, 1918, with an armistice signed in France's Compiègne Forest. The conflict, notorious for the introduction of devastating weaponry, such as machine guns and gas warfare, resulted in the loss of 10 million soldiers and inflicted catastrophic damage on property and industry. Following World War I, victorious nations imposed treaties on the defeated, notably the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, which attributed the war's outbreak to Germany and imposed significant reparations. This treaty marked a pivotal moment, placing heavy financial and moral responsibility on Germany, setting the stage for future consequences. The Treaty of Versailles imposed severe penalties on Germany, including the loss of 13% of its territories, heavy reparation payments, and the demilitarization of the Rhineland, limiting the German army to 100,000 men. This effectively crippled Germany's military and economic strength, marking a stark humiliation and drastic reduction of its pre-war power. In the tumultuous period of the Weimar Republic, 1918 to 1933, Wilhelm Keitel played a role in the Reichswehr and was involved in organizing the Freikorps, paramilitary groups made up largely of World War I veterans. These units were a response to the instability and revolutionary spirit in post-war Germany, symbolizing the country's internal struggle and the continued militarization of its society in the wake of defeat. The Freikorps, established to protect the Weimar Republic from communist threats, paradoxically harbored deep contempt for the Republic itself. While ostensibly defenders, many within their ranks actively participated in the assassination of Weimar supporters, embodying the internal conflicts and contradictions of post-war Germany. In 1924, Wilhelm Keitel moved to Berlin to join the Truppenamt, a covert operation masking the German Army General Staff's activities, reflecting his rise in the military ranks. This shift was propelled by both his own career ambitions and his wife's preference for military status over agricultural life, marking a significant turn in Keitel's path from potential farmer to key military strategist. Wilhelm Keitel was instrumental in Germany's secret rearmament skillfully circumventing the Treaty of Versailles by covertly expanding the military under the cover of civilian organizations. This clandestine effort continued even after Hitler's rise, initially maintaining its discretion before transitioning into an open and extensive military buildup. Cato's strategic planning laid the groundwork for Germany's military resurgence, marking a pivotal shift from covert operations to overt displays of power. In Nazi Germany where Adolf Hitler's word was absolute, Wilhelm Keitel epitomized loyalty, becoming known for his unquestioning obedience to Hitler. 
His peers, speaking in whispers, labeled him a blindingly loyal toady, highlighting his role as Hitler's devoted enforcer. Keitel's adherence to Hitler's demands marked him as a key figure in the regime, his identity intertwined with the Fuhrer's will. In 1935, Wilhelm Keitel was named head of the Armed Forces Office, overseeing Germany's military branches. With the transition to the German Armed Forces High Command in 1938, Hitler solidified his control as Commander-in-Chief, elevating Keitel to Chief of High Command and Reich Minister. This promotion made Keitel the second most powerful figure in the military hierarchy, directly beneath Hitler, significantly boosting his influence and solidifying the military's alignment under Nazi command. Wilhelm Keitel's promotion to a top military position surprised many, including Keitel himself, due to his perceived unsuitability for the role. His peers, who lacked respect for him, viewed him merely as a sycophantic follower of Hitler, often bypassing him to speak directly with the Fuhrer. This situation highlighted Keitel's isolation within the military hierarchy, underlined by skepticism and disregard from his colleagues. Adolf Hitler valued Wilhelm Keitel not for his intellectual or strategic contributions, but for his unwavering loyalty, described as dog-like by the Fuhrer. Despite recognizing Keitel's limited intellect and anxious demeanor, Hitler appreciated his diligence and obedience, highlighting a regime where loyalty was prized above all else, casting Keitel as a devoted but critically limited figure within the Nazi hierarchy. In early 1938, escalating tensions prompted Austrian Chancellor Kurt Schuschnigg to announce a referendum on joining Germany or maintaining Austria's sovereignty. Hitler's menacing presence led to military maneuvers near the Austrian border, heightening fears of an imminent invasion. In March 1938, Austria faced rapid annexation by Germany following Chancellor Schuschnigg's resignation. German troops swiftly occupied Austria, leading to its incorporation into Germany. The paragraph describes Adolf Hitler's arrival in Austria, where thousands greeted him enthusiastically, marking the beginning of the Anschluss, Germany's annexation of Austria. As a participant in this act of aggression, Wilhelm Keitel received the Anschluss Medal. World War II commenced with Germany's invasion of Poland on September 1, 1939. Keitel, involved in planning, was aware of its criminal nature, including mass arrests and ethnic cleansing against the Polish people. In the early stages of World War II, Reinhard Heydrich and Wilhelm Keitel orchestrated a brutal campaign targeting Polish nobles, clergy, Jews, and the intelligentsia. Heydrich's order on September 7, 1939, marked the beginning of mass executions, with Keitel expanding the scope just days later. The intelligentsia action led to the systematic murder of over 60,000 individuals, including former officials and intellectuals. This horrifying chapter exemplified the ruthless nature of war, instilling widespread fear and brutality. Wilhelm Keitel, a key figure in Nazi Germany, perpetuated a culture of fear and indifference as atrocities unfolded in conquered territories. Despite complaints from the officer corps, he ignored their pleas, allowing the horrors to persist. This indifference fostered moral desensitization among commanders and soldiers, spreading fear and perpetuating inhumanity. After the invasion of Poland, Wilhelm Keitel received a bonus of 100,000 Reichsmarks for his loyalty. The Battle of France began on May 10, 1940, with a rapid and overwhelming invasion by German forces that conquered France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands within just six weeks. Keitel praised Hitler as a superior war strategist after Germany's rapid conquest of France. Hitler further humiliated France by having the armistice signed in the same rail car where Germany had surrendered in World War I, intensifying the fear and indignity felt by the French. Hitler orchestrated a dramatic symbol of power by relocating the historic rail car where Germany had surrendered in World War I to the same forest where the defeat had unfolded. On June 22, 1940, an armistice was signed by General Keitel for Germany and General Hunziger for France, marking a new era under the shadow of the Third Reich. Wilhelm Keitel's promotion to field marshal did little to earn him respect among high-ranking Nazis, who continued to regard him with disdain. Hermann Goering, head of the Luftwaffe, famously criticized Keitel, highlighting perceptions of his limited intellect despite his elevated rank. Wilhelm Keitel, 
a high-ranking Nazi official, signed orders in April 1941 that allowed the execution of Jews, civilians, and non-combatants without repercussion. These directives unleashed terror across Nazi-occupied territories, granting impunity to those who carried out the murders. However, Keitel was also affected by the war as his youngest son, Hans Gorg, was killed in July 1941 during the German attack on the Soviet Union, an attack that Keitel had helped execute. At the end of the war, his eldest son, Karl Heinz, was made a prisoner of war by the Russians. On the 20th of July, 1944, Klaus von Stauffenberg and other conspirators attempted to assassinate Hitler. After the bomb had exploded, Keitel personally led the wounded Hitler out of the room. In the days that followed, Hitler ordered a massive hunt for conspirators, which continued for months. Many of them appeared before the notorious people's courts for show trials, but this practice was ended as it gave conspirators a platform to condemn the regime. In the end, more than 7,000 people were arrested and 4,980 were executed, often on the barest evidence. On the 1st of October 1946, the International Military Tribunal found Wilhelm Keitel guilty on all four counts and sentenced him to death by hanging. His request for a military execution by firing squad was denied due to the criminal, rather than military nature, of his acts. On the 16th of October 1946, the day of Keitel's execution, Keitel told the prison chaplain, You have helped me more than you know. May Christ my Savior stand by me all the way. I shall need him so much. As we delve deeper into Wilhelm Keitel's legacy, it's clear that his unwavering loyalty to Hitler led him down a path of notoriety and disgrace. His actions endorsed and perpetuated the atrocities committed during the Third Reich, leaving a stain on history that would never be erased. Despite his military achievements, he is remembered more for his complicity in the war crimes committed during World War II. His life serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of blind loyalty and the importance of moral courage in positions of power. Cato's decisions, driven by loyalty and ambition, had far-reaching consequences, not only for himself, but also for the entire world. His story is a brutal lesson in the costs of ambition unchecked by morality and conscience. It underscores the significance of personal responsibility particularly for those in positions of power. The world has since moved on, but the shadows of the past remain. The lessons from Wilhelm Keitel's life and the era he was a part of are as relevant today as they were then. As we continue to grapple with the complexities of power, morality, and loyalty in our present world, it is essential to remember the lessons history has taught us. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating historical content. As we continue to explore the past, we can better understand the present and envision a more enlightened future.